Welcome back to Iron Anchor Cycles. And continuing with the theme of our last video, we've got another Dyna here on the lift that we're gonna do some work on today. This particular bike belongs to Corey, who works here at the shop with us, and uh, maybe we'll coax him out of the office to come and give me a hand with this, since it's his bike. Uh, but what we're gonna do on this bike is actually pretty simple, but I thought it would be kind of a cool, interesting, little different thing to uh, show you guys out there in YouTube land. So what this started off with was uh, wanting to add a set of Leather Pros bags to this bike. That, of course, all by itself is nothing new or special or unique. Uh, Leather Pros bags are my favorite, and I would argue the best bags you can get for a Dyna, uh, or probably an M8 Softail too. Uh, but what that led to was some questions that had to be answered about how we deal with some of the modifications that have to be made in order to accommodate the bags. And that is, again, not super complicated. Um, basically, the turn signals are in the way of the bags. And then also, you can't see it on the other side, uh, the bike has the uh, side mount license plate bracket that is part of the left side turn signal assembly. So all that stuff has to come off in order to accommodate the bags. And again, not super complicated. The only wrinkle in that plan uh, that is complicated slightly by the Lowrider S is the short chopped rear fender. So in a situation with a bike that had a full rear fender, you could pretty simply just put an integrated tail light on in place of the one that was on there. There are your turn signals and mount the tail light up on top uh, or really anywhere else. I'm sorry, mount the license plate up on top or really anywhere else. Um, in this case, there are some options and some things that we've done in the case of other bikes. Uh, we've done it on fat bobs and on street bobs that also have the short fenders where We've put uh, the Cycle Visions license plate bracket on that'll include turn signals, brake lights, running lights, all that stuff. Kind of brings the fender down, your license plate goes in there. It looks really clean and it's a good solution, uh, but we thought we could do one step better with this bike and be a little bit more creative and have this bike start to look a little bit more unique. Now, I won't venture to say that this is gonna be totally unique or we are by, the, by, by any means the first people to do this. Um, it's just a cool little thing which is uh, to swap the rear fender for a traditional full Dyna fender. So obviously once you've done that, you now have the location for a tail light with turn signals built into it as, long as, as well as your license plate and the rest of the stuff can come off. I personally think the full fender looks better, gives it a more traditional sort of Dyna look and obviously you'll get a little bit more coverage for your rear tire too if that's something that matters to you. Um, the only uh, issue there, if you choose to see it, I suppose, is if you're putting that bike to 12 o'clock more often than not, you're going to scrape the back of it off. But I think I would uh, argue that probably most people who are doing that see that as a badge of honor more than anything else. So all that said, we're going to go ahead and get this done. It's not going to take a super long amount of time or be complicated. We've got the fender in. We got it from RWD. It's painted and ready to go on. So we're going to start unbolting some stuff off this bike. We'll get it stripped down and then we'll take a look at putting all the new parts on. All right, so with the disassembly done, uh, you could take this opportunity to do a little bit of cleaning in here and wipe down some of this stuff that probably hasn't seen a rag since it left the factory. And we're ready to start putting some new parts on. So as I mentioned, in addition to the fender, we're also gonna be putting in uh, the saddlebag hardware for the Leather Pros. And in addition to that, the Sissy Bar quick release uh, uh, docking points from Harley. So all that'll go on together. Uh, but the first thing that we've got to do is get the fender set up with the wiring harness and some of the original uh, little bits and pieces that came off the original fender. So we're gonna get started on that and uh, we'll jump back in with getting this fender put on. All right, so we've got our fender set and ready to go on. Obviously what we did here was took some of the hardware that came on the original fender, uh, these spacers on the side, the cap plugging the solo seat hole, and then the nut for the uh, seat screw that's held capped up with this little plastic ring. All that stuff gets transferred over. And then if you look on the inside, we've got our new wiring harness running here, the ends sticking out on both sides. And obviously this is new because the Lowrider S, similar to something like a Street Bob, would come with like a three-piece harness with separate wires going to each side. 
Whereas in the application we're using now, we're just gonna be running all the wires to the tail light and using like a typical um, square back tail light circuit board from Custom Dynamics in conjunction with the moon's tail light. So you can wire these up yourself and the fender actually comes with uh, this welded tube in here that you can run the wiring through. Um, but this actually works even better because it comes all set and ready to go with this chase that's made out of rubber with double-sided like 3M tape on the back of it and you just wipe the area down, make sure it's clean, stick this in, and you're good to go. So this fender is ready to go in, so we're gonna go ahead and start to slide it in, just being careful obviously not to scratch anything, and uh, we'll get it going. So while Corey looks for the shit he just dropped on the floor, I'll uh, kind of tell you what we're doing here, which is essentially just putting these all in loose to start off with. The Leather Pros kit comes with like a, call it like a serrated kind of lock nut deal that will need a wrench to go on. So we just grab some regular standard nuts uh, just to hold it in place temporarily because what we want to do obviously is put Loctite on these. We want to tighten them down evenly. We want to make sure the fender is nice and straight. And that's easier to do before you do the, the final, final assembly. So we'll get it in place nice and snug, and then we'll pull each one of these out one at a time, put some Loctite on, and switch the nut. So that's what we're gonna do now. Um, in addition, obviously, if you saw, I just pulled the wiring harness uh, up through under the seat where it's gonna plug in. And then we've just got a little bit of work to do to get our license plate bracket on, as well as the taillight base plate with the new circuit board and ultimately the new taillight. That'll all go back here. So we're starting to get a picture of what this is gonna look like. I think it's coming out pretty rad. Obviously, once we get this bike jacked up a little bit more, I think it'll look a little bit better too. Um, we're just gonna keep doing that. Once we get this all snug in place, we'll come back and we'll take a look at the rest of the install. Okay, so fender is on tight, straight, and aligned. Uh, everything is as it should be. I'm gonna say again, this fender we got from RWD is so super solid, definitely beefier than the one that came off here. Um, we've got the Leather Pros docking points as well as the Harley Sissy Bar Quick Detach docking points inside of them. And if you're unfamiliar, Leather Pros is really helpful in this regard in that it comes with two sets of hardware to do the mount uh, on the bike so that you can do it with or without the saddlebag docking points. I'm sorry, without, with or without the Sissy Bar docking points. So we've got that all on. We'll get the bags fitted and the brackets on the bags adjusted after we get everything else done. The next thing we gotta do is get the tail light, I'm sorry, the license plate frame uh, mounted on here. So quick thing, um, we were asked when I did this in a, in a previous video, uh, who makes this? And there's a link in the description in the bottom of the video to it. This is, and I will say surprisingly, sort of in parentheses, uh, made by Kiriakin. Um, that's a brand uh, which, if you're into baggers from 15 years ago, you'd know it well. Um, they don't do make a lot of stuff that we use regularly here, particularly for dynas, uh, but they happen to have, in my opinion, one of the best uh, license, license plate mounts for a three-hole triangle application. The only weak point in it is uh, the hardware that comes with it for these three holes to mount onto the fender is complete junk. Um, first of all, I believe they're metric, which is no big deal, I suppose, at its face. Um, but they are incredibly weak and they're chromed, I believe, which is why they don't thread into the nuts properly. Just about every one we've tried to use, um, you start turning the nut into the, onto the screw and the screw snaps. And they're not small screws either, so that it would snap is they get galled up and whatever, they just break. So do yourself a favor, throw that all in the trash and just get yourself a handful of stainless quarter 20 hardware and put this on using that. Um, there are some countersunk screws that are used on the license plate frame. That's the cover for the backing plate. Uh, those are fine. They seem to thread into here, no problem. Um, I would just advise using caution with stuff from them just because it's obviously not super quality checked. Um, but anyway, we're gonna go ahead and put this on and we'll jump over to the tail light afterwards. All right, so he gets done putting the uh, license plate frame screws. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the tail light. This is pretty straightforward, pretty simple, just a couple little caveats. So the tail light itself is an integrated uh, stoplight turn signal light. This one comes from Moons. You can get them from anywhere. 
Um, you've got a turn signal plug for each side, and then you've got your uh, taillight plug. That is going to plug into your taillight base plate. So if you were coming off of a bike that had one of these already, um, you'd have a base plate already, and you'd have this circuit board as part of the base plate. In our case, um, we didn't have a base plate, so we bought a black one, and this comes from Custom Dynamics. And again, if you were making a swap, you would just take the circuit board out of your chrome one and stick it into the black one. In our case, obviously, like I said, we didn't have a taillight base plate, so we needed to buy one of these two, also comes from Custom Dynamics. So simply put the uh, circuit board into the taillight base plate, and that just snaps into place, just like that. Now you're ready to go, and this is gonna plug in and screw in. The only other thing to keep in mind if you're not doing this on a bike, again, that came with one of these is none of this comes with hardware. So there's a bolt that you'll need to get to attach this to the fender, and you'll also need to get the screws to attach the taillight to the base plate. So we're gonna get all this stuff put on, plugged in, and uh, we'll see how all this looks. Okay, so we got our taillight base plate on along with the circuit board we talked about and our taillight is now plugged in to the corresponding jacks. Really, really simple. Uh, one other thing that you do have to do on these bikes that didn't originally come with a taillight uh, that we're now adding one to that I didn't mention before is you do have to do uh, an update on the body control module, which is done uh, using a laptop. Dealership can do it, a shop can do it, whoever, uh, to enable uh, a taillight or looked at another way, it disable the functionality of the turn signals acting as the taillight. So if you don't do that uh, BCM flash, what will happen is when you hit your brake lights, your turn signals will illuminate instead of your taillight. Uh, that would be the same for kind of doing anything that has a uh, different color LEDs that you're replacing that are the single color LEDs that are on the bike. So a little too much detail there maybe, but nevertheless, we just did the BCM flash. We got this all uh, hooked up. And now the last thing is we just need to Go ahead and put this in and get our screws started. And obviously this is all plastic, so of critical importance is making sure that you don't over tighten. You obviously want it to be snug and you want to close the gap between the light and the base plate. Um, but you absolutely do not want to over tighten these because they crack the plastic. All right, so with that all buttoned up, power switch. Obviously we've got our running light there, brake light. This one happens to have a strobe function built into it that can be disabled by hitting a little button on it. And we got a turn signal, and that's working. And we got our other turn signal, and that's working. So uh, that is gonna be it for that part of it. And now all that's left to do is uh, get the saddlebags on and get those adjusted, and this bike will be ready to roll. All right, so there you have it. Everything's all done and buttoned up. In this particular case, the uh, latches on the leather post bags were just fine in terms of adjustment right out of the box. Keep an eye on that and obviously make sure that they don't get too loose. Um, but otherwise, all set. Uh, I personally think this looks really great. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, impetus for this project was really just to put the bags on the bike and having to come up with a solution for the turn signals on the license plate. Uh, but I think what we wound up doing here was creating something actually a lot cooler uh, than sort of what was planned. You know, having the full fender on the low rider rest is just something that's a little bit different. And personally, I just think it looks a whole lot better. So with the bags on, obviously the curve of the fender uh, is matched perfectly to the Leather Pro's bags, or I should say the other way around. Um, and with it off, it just has a really, really traditional dyno look to it. So this looks awesome. Obviously we did everything in black to kind of go with the aesthetic of the bike and, um, that's gonna be a wrap on that. Real simple, real easy install. All you gotta do is get the parts, uh, a lot of which we sell. So check out the link in the bottom of the uh, description there. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you next time.